Hey guys, welcome back, <laughs> welcome back to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today we're going to be learning a very cool trick. Um, so during the weekend I had a family gathering and um, we had to go out of town. And uh, while we had some free time I was able to play a little uh, on my Switch. So um, I don't have a lot of like playing time nowadays. Uh, and I was playing this game, Dead Cells. So maybe some of you guys, let me show you the screen. Maybe some of you guys have seen this or played this game. I really like it. It's a, it's a really nice nicely made game it's a beautiful looking it's this pixel art thing um it's really hard like really really hard i, I can't beat the second boss so <laughs> i've been stuck trying to like improve my runs and get better gear and stuff a really cool game if you guys have a chance to play it out and you like if you like roguelikes or castlevania kind of games um I, I really recommend this one now uh one thing that really caught my eye while while playing this one was the fact that the animations are really really nice really crisp the like anticipation and follow through overlaps like all of those stuff uh, it's really nice so i was curious and i did a little bit of research and it turns out that these guys are actually using Using, um, they're not using traditional like pixel art um, like drawings. They're doing 3D models and they converting those to like really low quality renders and using the information from those renders to polish up the animations. So there's of course a little bit of uh, pixel art stuff, but uh, there's a lot of 3D as well. So that really really caught my eye and I was like, well, there should be a way to do it. Like why not try it? And this is what they came up with. So this is an old model that um, I. Um, I had from another project that we didn't finish. I think I've shown this one before. Now this method, of course, is not my method. I did not invent it, but this is the result. So as you can see, this is an animation and it's in pixel art form. So this one's a little bit big. It's 128, um, what's the word, 128 uh, pixels. Uh, but as you can see, it, it looks really, really cool. Now we can make this look even like smaller if we were to change the samples to like 64, depending on how like pixely we want this to look. Let's go 64. Let's play now. Let's stop the animation. There we go. So now at 64, it looks even, even less a detail, right? More like a like just a blob. But if you see this on, on your game, like at this size of the screen, it looks quite nice, I think. And uh, it, it still looks like a little bit. It has like th this three dimensionality to it because of course it's a three D model, right? So I'm going to show you how I set up this shader. It's a super simple shader, and then I'm going to show you the kind of things that you can change in the shader to make it look a little bit better. So we're using Arnold um, to create or generate this thing right here. Let me stop the animation. And uh, this is the shader, this one right here. It's a very basic AI standard surface and it doesn't look like it's gonna give us the tune result right here. Um, and when I was setting up and learning about this process, uh, which is on the official Arnold documentation, I also thought that it, was, it wasn't gonna work, but it does work. So uh, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna set up your basic transparency or your basic color map. So it's just basic color map of our character goes into the basic color of our object. Now I did change the specularity of it. I turned the specularity off. So there's no light being reflected from the object. That's one of the things that needs to change because we're gonna be faking that uh, uh, reflectivity or, or specularity with this ramp node right here. And I'm gonna talk about in just a second. So all of the magic really happens with the emission color, which as you can see, it's down here. And to the emission color, we're gonna be inputting some elements. Now, why the emission? Well, remember guys that the emission is just part of the object that's gonna be emitting light. So they multiply the values of the surface of the object by whatever light is being applied to them. So if we connect, as you can see, the color of our character into this node, which I'll explain in just a second, and then get that in there, it's it's like the skin is gonna be glowing and we're gonna be deciding where the skin glows the most. Because remember, at the end of the day, with the emission, the, the darker the value on the emission, like if you have a, a color of zero, there's no emission. And if you have a color of one or white, there's gonna be a lot of emission. So, uh, this right here is, I would say, the, the magic of everything happening. So it's the AI color correct. And the way this works is very simple. As you can see, I have plugged in the output color of our color, like our color map, into the multiply node of our element. You can just drag and drop that into the little element right here or connect them via their like, little links. And, and that will connect all of the color information from your color map into the multiply. So again, the, the multiply is really important because we're not doing an, an, an over operation. We're multiplying the colors that live underneath the color by its own color. So it, it's like a little bit of a, of a weird math right there. But uh, again, at the end of the day, what's happening here is that we're multiplying the, the colors of the basic material with themselves depending on where they are. 
okay? Now, that depending on where they are, that's the important part because we're going to be using this ramp right here. As you can see, we have these values. So I just created like two clicks. You can click here on a, on a ramp node. Ramps are one of the most basic nodes inside of Maya. You can just press uh, the tab key here, tab key, and um, write ramp. It's this ramp texture. Um, and that ramp texture is what's driving the, the edges or the colors of our object. So you can see here I have four of them. So I have a really like a really shiny one, but that's white, and then a light gray, a middle gray, and then dark gray. And if I render this, you can see, let's let me bring this a little bit higher on the on the resolution. There we go. So you can see one, two, three, and then the fourth color. So there's there's going to be like four bands on our character. If you only want like three bands on your character, delete one of them, like this one, for instance. I'm going to do white and then a gray, as you can see here. And depending on how we move this ramp, that's how the, the whole thing is going to be like working. So again, if you want like a really, really thick like uh, like border there, we can change this around. I, I really like the four ones because it gives a little bit more three-dimensionality to it. But again, you can change like how how big you want each of these guys to, to influence like different parts of your character. So there we go, because again, we're multiplying colors, okay? So that's the ramp. Now for the ramp, the only thing you're gonna change are up here on the type ramp, you need to change this to U ramp, so it's going from left to right, and you're gonna change the none uh, on the interpolation, because by default, you have this sort of like smooth or linear interpolation where it's like soft, and, and that's not gonna give you the result that you want. It still, it still looks like really 3D, which again, if this is what you want, perfect. But if you want like a little bit of a harsher line, you're gonna change this back to none. So there's no interpolation and there's gonna be like a really, really strong band between the, the elements, between the, the different points. So yeah, there we go. Now, the next thing you're gonna do or the next node that we need for this uh, shader to work properly is uh, this AI facing ratio. And I remember when I learned about the facing ratio thing ooh, a long time ago, I never thought like, why would that be important? But that's actually pretty important for specific materials like velvet, uh, bubbles, uh, this sort of thing. Like there are certain materials that the facing ratio has uh, a lot to do with. So I'm gonna be very brief here. Uh, anytime you have like an object here, like on a 3D camera, like we're seeing like straight to the object, the faces that are here, they have a value in regards to their facing, facing direction. So they're facing completely towards us. We can say that that's a facing value of one. And as you go along the surface, faces, the normals of the faces are gonna be changing, right? That they're gonna be facing to other places all the way until we hit the face that's facing zero because it's, it's not facing us. That's the face where, where the geometry disappears because we're no longer seeing it. So we could say like the last phase we're gonna see it's gonna be like a 0 0.00, like one or something, right? And after that, we don't see anything. So that information is on the camera. Like the camera knows how each face that is facing us uh, is in regards to the, the facing ratio or the facing angle. So what we're saying here is, hey, we wanna use the facing ratio to drive this U ramp and depending on how, how intense we change the bias and the gain of this facing ratio is how intense or not we're gonna be detecting those specific areas. So again, if we try to simplify the math, what's happening here is I'm saying, hey, the faces that are facing straight towards us, you're gonna use this color and you're gonna multiply it with white to give me pretty much the same color, right? A little bit brighter maybe, but just the same color. And as we get out of the camera, like as, as the facing ratio changes from the camera, you're gonna darken those colors because we're using again the glow to multiply these colors by the amount that we're selecting right here on the ramp. So that is pretty much it. That Those are like all of the elements that we're controlling here. So again, if I hit play here, the things that I can change to make my pixel art look a little bit nicer, this 3D pixel art is change the amount of colors here, right? Like for instance, if I don't want this white to be as bright, just click it, select this guy, and lower the value here. And that's gonna give me a different effect. So in that case, I'm, I'm getting rid of some of the banding and giving like a, like a nicer, like more neutral look. Uh, but in this case, I do like it, so we're gonna keep it there. And you can go to the last one. Oh yeah, by the way, the facing ratio gets connected to the U coordinate of the ramp uh, node. So you need to expand the U coordinate and connect this out value to the U value. That's why we changed the U uh, on this ramp, the U type, so that it follows this U coordinate that we're inputting from the facing ratio. So there's two things here, the bias and the gain. The lower the bias, the darker or the, the more like, the more uh, attention you're gonna place to the faces facing outwards. 
And the higher you go here, the more attention you're going to place to the faces facing forward. So in this case, if you want like a really thick, dark line, you're going to go with a very low bias. And if you want like a really like nice, subtle line, you're probably going to bring the bias like all the way up here. So again, depending on the kind of uh, pixel art you want, you're going to be pushing this. Gain also changes like the intensity of the lines. So if you want like a really heavy contrast, you're probably going to bring the gain down. And by playing around with these two guys, you're going to be able to create a nice little uh, style for yourself. So for instance, this one right here looks a little bit less 3D, like a little bit flatter. And uh, I think it looks a little bit closer to what I would expect from a from a pixel art game. And uh, after that, it's just a matter of like defining, like I know uh, some of my students on, on one of the schools that I'm teaching, they're doing a pixel art game. And, um, and they told me that the main hero is like 64 by 64. So this will be like the like the size of the hero right here. And as you can see, I could just like export this animation and this is the animation that I would program in, in Unreal, for instance, or not Unreal, probably Unity. Unity has a little bit better capabilities for 2D art. And this is the sprite that I would get. And as you can see, I don't have to draw every specific spine because we have this. Now, let's do something uh, interesting here because this is just like an idle pose. I do think I have the controllers here. So let me go um, Alt-2. Oh, sorry. Alt. There we go. Alt-1. So we have this punch right here, or this this uh, element right here. I'm gonna change this to IK. There we go, or FK. So oh, and let's let's keep it FK. So let me see. We have animations. Yeah, it's just like a like a very basic animation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a punch. So let's say we have like 20 frames, and we're gonna bring. It's just gonna be like a very stupid and basic punch, uh, but it should work. So I'm gonna bring the body back. prepare the punch and then so so we have this it's like a like a preparation 20 frames I think it's, it's more than enough time to give uh, the player for uh, like time to prepare and then in very few frames probably get like five frames I'm gonna do the punch so let's bring this all the way forward by the way if you like this rig guys this is the rig that we do on the rigging course so check it out this is very very similar so we punch, let's even like add a little bit of uh, like exaggeration here. There we go, like we call this a um, overshoot to make it so that, so you don't actually see the punch, you see what's after the punch. They do this in cartoons quite a bit. Let's lower the head because maybe that, that's gonna be like a, um, like a weak spot or something. There we go. And then he's going to go back. Now, I know this animation is horrible because like the head is doing some crazy stuff right there. Let's try and bring it. I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not making this as a, as a like a professionally made animation. But it's it's something right. So uh, especially like, like the thing I want to show you guys is how the pixel art would look. Right. Again, not perfect. But this is what you would see or use on a, on a game. Like this would be the sprite. So imagine having to, to draw all of the perspective things that you would need for a character. It would be a little bit too much, right? It would be, I, I think it would be quite difficult to, to draw in, in such a uh, fast uh, like amount of time. Like right now it took me, what, 13 minutes to do this, like this setup. So yes, uh, I was talking with this about, sorry, I'm, I feel like I'm like losing my head right now because I, I don't, <laughs> um, I, I lost the thread of the thought. Let's pause. There we go. Okay. So I think this technique that we're using right now would be very, very useful if from the very beginning of the planning of your game or your project, you decide you're going to go this way. Why? Because instead of having to draw all of the keyframes and in-betweens and stuff that you would need for your pixel art, you could in instead spend the time doing 3D models, rigging them, animating them, and then using them as much as you want. Now, is this faster or more efficient? I don't know. If you're a better 3D artist, I would say this is more efficient because you, you should be able to model and sculpt and paint faster in 3D than having to do all of the 2D work. Uh, but if you're a 2D artist and you're really fast, maybe this whole thing, it's a little bit too much, right? Maybe like having to do all of the rakes and stuff might be a little bit too difficult. But if you think back to like the skull that we did, that skull didn't really took us that much time, right? It was what, like an hour, an hour and a half of work. And we could do this exact same technique with the skull. And we have an enemy that we're going to be able to do as many like turns and spins and things as we want. Um, that might open more options and more paths to our 
uh, to the pixel art. So yeah, this is it. Let me know what you guys think about this technique. Um, the tun shader has a lot more applications. Again, I'm not like super, super like studied on that specific shader. Um, that's another one that you could use, but this technique, the facing ratio technique, I think is really, really cool. And, uh, hopefully you guys liked it. So yeah. Now, before we close a couple of announcements, um, we're going to have our live stream this week. This is the final week of the month. So we normally have a live stream. I'm going to change things around a little bit. So we're going to have our live stream on, uh, let me think. Um, uh, it's gonna be Tuesday for me. It's gonna be Tuesday, uh, late Tuesday for me. So it's gonna be early Wednesday for most of us. I know most of our audience is from uh, Europe and um, Asia, so India and other places as well. So it's gonna be at 10 a.m. India time Wednesday, okay? So it's gonna be early in the morning. It's gonna be from like 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. I'm gonna to try to do like two hours and we're gonna be working on the lighthouse. I know we've abandoned that project that we haven't like really touched it since like early January. So I'm gonna be working on that one. Hopefully all of the questions are gonna be directed to those, but you know that if you uh, ask something else and it's uh, regarding some of the topics we're covering, I'm happy to help. Um, also, uh, some of uh, the people from this weekend ask, where can I submit my work for my portfolio? We do those every month. The next one is going to be, let me tell you real quick. It's probably going to be on uh, March uh, 12th and uh, 13th. So two weeks from now, three weeks from, from now, one, two, yeah, three weeks from now. So I'm going to wait just one week and probably on the Monday, the 28th of, uh, of February, we'll open the link again so that you guys can submit on the on the official link that's going to be down in the videos. If you go back to old videos, you might not find the proper link. So, so we'll just wait until the 28th to get the uh, link for the portfolio reviews. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, have a good one and I'll see you back on the Wednesday. Bye-bye.